Bourbon from the 1980s? Evan Williams? Eight-year-old? What? Never heard of it. Well, let's find out. Hi, Whiskey Jason here. Whiskey from the viewpoint of an American in Germany, and today I have something special. Evan Williams, eight-year-old from the 1980s. 43%. Um, over here in Europe, you can still find bottles that were produced up until the 90s um, from Evan Williams, which are eight years old. And this bottle, um, this sample bottle, I actually received from a friend of mine who lives in Poland. And he bought this on an auction site, and this was originally produced for Italy. If you ever go to whiskeybase.com, you can find this with the Whiskey Base ID number 94326. 43%, as I said. Um, in the summer of 2017, I visited the um, Evan Williams Experience, Evan Williams Bourbon Experience, there in um, Louisville, Kentucky. And they talked about the Shapira family. I think they immigrated a long time ago from Russia. And um, 1935, when um, Prohibition was over, they knew that beforehand and they prepared as much as possible to actually get a jump on things and to have a working distillery as, a distillery as soon as possible. Um, the interesting thing is there's a picture of them where they have their belt buckles almost up to their, um, their chests. Um, 1950s, and they were filling all together, um, the four of them, the 500th barrel. And the, the slogan was, they cannot tell a, um, a barrel from a box. And so they needed a partner. They needed someone who would become the master distiller to do the hard, heavy work. And they found someone, someone very, very special. It was Joseph L. Beam. Joseph L. Beam was the cousin of Jim Beam, one of the um, descendants, descendants of Jacob, Jacob Beam, that actually started the Jim Beam distillery. And so Heaven Hill had a real beam as a master distiller. His first cousin uh, was Harry Beam. And he had a son, if I'm correctly informed, not named Earl Beam. And Earl Beam had a son named Parker Beam. Now, when I was in um, the Heaven Hill um, Bourbon Heritage Center, they had on sale a Parker Heritage Bourbon. 194, 199, I don't know exactly the price anymore, um, dollars. And I was like, I looked online, I was like, oh, I don't know, and nah, I didn't buy it. I did buy an Evan Williams 23 in Louisville, which was an interesting thing. Um, only available there, Japan, and over here in Germany, instead of the $300, it's about $800. And I didn't buy the Parker Heritage, unfortunately. Parker was the master distiller until Craig Beam took over. So we had Joseph, Harry, Earl, Parker, and Craig. Five generations. Uh, Parker passed away in, I think it was the, the spring of 2017. It was April or March. And um, Parker and Craig, actually in the 80s, this was one of the first things they did together. An eight-year-old Evan Williams back in the 80s. So let's do the nose. this nose. I poured it before. The video started just right before. Um, I don't know if you've tasted bourbon from the 70s, the 80s. I actually had a bourbon the other day. It was um, distilled 1957 from Jim Beam and it was um, filled, bottled in 1967. Great stuff. There's a special thing about whiskeys from the 60s, 70s, 80s. Um, I think they just used a different yeast. And the yeast was not as industrialized as it is now to, to maximize the amount of alcohol made from the starches and from sugars. And those yeasts back then were a little bit less optimized. Let's say that word, genetically optimized. And this is so interesting. I really, really love the nose here. It's a rich, creamy caramel nose. This is only 43%, so I don't have much alcohol at all. I got a lot of brown sugar. I have a little bit of molasses, even. And a little bit of wood up to, the wo up to sweet wood. Now I want to try this. Mmm. <laughs> 
this is my my um, taste bud monitor. It comes in fairly weak, 43%. Oh, it's so good. The 43% isn't really great. It almost tastes a little bit on the watery side. Just waits two seconds in the mouth, and then this yeasty, sweet wood, caramel, candy corn type of pecan expression happens, which is wonderful. But then when you swallow, it gets better. <clears throat> the wood comes through, the caramels come in, that sweet wood really kicks in. There's a little bit of alcohol supporting the whole thing. And it's just a very, very um, holistic type of experience. It's great. Even now, after talking for like 25, 30 seconds, it's still in my mouth. and I'm still going, yummy, yummy. This is some really good stuff. Unfortunately, unless you go to some auction sites, you won't be able to find it. But I highly recommend go to an auction site. Try to find something. At least over in Europe, we have auction sites. In the States, it's difficult. You have to find a, a distributor which, allow, which has a license to sell it and a license to send it to your state. Sorry, guys. In Europe, it's a little bit easier. Um, try to find the bottle from the 80s and test it. I've had a, a wild turkey from the 80s. Much, much better than the stuff we have today. Um, I've had, as I said, the Jim Beam here from the 1958 distilled 1967 um, it was bottled. This here was actually um, eight years old. If you take a look from the 1980s, it might have been actually distilled in the 1970s and then bottled in the 1980s. A very, very nice thing. I'm going to give this on my list a B plus. It's almost an A minus, but a B plus. Now, unfortunately... Um, Bourbon auctions are not always cheap. My friend, Pierto, in Poland that I got this from, this was originally a bottling only for Italy. Welcome to Europe. And um, he paid almost 100 euros for this, about $112 at the moment. So it's quite expensive. So I'm going to give it like a 3. I'm going to give it like a C-. minus. It should be an F, but I think an exotic bottle of bourbon in Europe... An 18-year-old, which we can't find anywhere, basically, and also from the 80s, allows me to give this a better-than-normal grade. That's why I gave it a C plus, C minus. I'm sorry. So a B plus as a taste, a C minus for the price value. Is it worth it? If you can find it, why not? I'd go up to hundred dollars to try this, to share this with my friends, and actually have the experience of what alcohol used to be way back when, when I was a little boy. Mmm, that's good. Whiskey Jason here. Whiskey from the viewpoint of an American in Germany. I taste rare and exotic whiskeys, things you can't normally find otherwise. If you want to watch me in German, please feel free. Whiskey aus der Sicht eines Americanas. You can find me on YouTube. And otherwise, just wait for my next video to come out. Usually on Tuesdays and Fridays, I might be bumping that up in the future. Because I have a backlog of videos I'd really like to show you. And I think more and more will be coming in the future. Thank you very much for watching. Comments down below. Question of the day. What is the oldest whiskey you've ever had? I'm not talking about 40-year-old whiskey. I'm talking about when was the oldest whiskey ever distilled that you had? So, for me, it was the year 1958. So, I'm going back almost 60-some years now. Wow. Um, what's yours oldest? Who knows? All right. Thank you very much. Whiskey Jason here. See you soon. Bye-bye.